Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Z. I'm a clinical psychologist specializing in transgender care. Welcome to my channel and welcome to our Monday's Q&As. This is a place where I answer your direct and specific questions. So if you have a question for me that is not diagnostic, uh, that can be generalized, please email to info at drzphd.com. The email is going to be down below. As always, I have blocked out everybody's name for privacy reasons, and I have selected six uh, first questions that come in my Q&A folder, and I haven't had a chance to look at them. Really excited to see what's uh, today in our Q&A. There's going to be timestamps, as always, uh, down below. Um, so let's get started. The first question looks like is the only one that is lensly, so bear with me. First question for today. Hi, Dr. Zia. I realized I was a transgender woman about three and a half years ago. So when I first came out to my wife, it was not received well. Our next five to six months, we drifted over the next, sorry, five to six months, we drifted apart. She said, I love you, but I married a man, not a woman. So she said, if you continue, there will be no intimacy or touching or kissing. And there will always be a distance between us. I have done a lot of thinking over the past two years. I want to display more feminine and am okay with living a double life. Work life would remain male, and also in the small town I live in, I'm an ICU, which is, for those who don't know, that's intensive care unit, nurse, and ICU nurses have a long history of eating their own. Oof, I'm sorry, I didn't know that, that the history of ICU nursing. That's brutal. Um, especially a new nurse to the ICU. I restarted taking estrogen five and a half months ago and T blocker a month ago. I produce very little testosterone, so level is low naturally, but not gone. If I did 100% transition, I would lose marriage and my best friend. Have to work in, an, in have to, sorry, I'm losing my pace where I'm at. Um, a knowledge base I have, okay, so <laughs> have to work in an area that I'm not known. People I work give me a lot of respect because of skill and knowledge base I have being an ICU for 18 and a half years now. That is quite an expertise, actually. Providers and staff have small minds and a culture in my hospital is not one I agree with also. They're conservative in care and are reactive, not proactive. I have taught, I was taught to be proactive. I have no problem with sharing knowledge or experience as being transgender. I have started my own channel on YouTube and have three videos out as of this note. We'll start posting more over coming weeks and months. A new experience is living a double life, enough of a transition to make one happy with themselves as to how they live a double life. I actually do want couple surgeries and, of course, people who know me would know things weren't adding up. Any advice you can share with your experience and knowledge? Thank you, Dr. C, for your general and insist. Uh, and insight. Well, thank you so much for sharing so much about yourself. I am sorry to hear about the challenges you're facing. Uh, this is a very common question. Can I sustain the duality in my life? Um, and I, in fact, I have videos on this topic and we just recently had a question like such in Q&A. Uh, here you are, your wife made it very clear that she not interested in having any intimacy because she's attracted particularly to male gender and as you're shifting more to feminine as uh, the interest is not going to be there and you also have a concern being the ICU nurse that if you were to come out how are people are going to react knowing the culture of ICU nursing so can you continue doing this double life so first I just want to point some things that I picked up from what you shared with us today one thing that I want to pick up is that um before I say what I picked up, a lot of times, and this is encouragement to a lot of viewers who are watching to uh, observe this in their lives, but a lot of times we will do things without even realizing. Sometimes to self-sabotage ourselves, and sometimes because that's exactly what we actually want to do, but still afraid to do. In your case, what I picked up is that you do want to present your authentic self as feminine. You do want to go through elements of medical and surgical transition. What I picked up I knew that you're doing is you started YouTube channel. That opens you obviously up to possibility of exposure, right? At least somebody at work, you never know, might find your channel. So this, if I were working with you, I would 
encourage you to reflect on because this is an unconscious manifestation of a desire to be found out, a desire almost, you know, sometimes we're so afraid to confront our truth that we will engage in things without even realizing. Again, this is happening unconsciously for a shoe to drop and then we're kind of forced uh, to confront. We have no other alternative. Um, and this is what also might be happening here, which is an indication how badly you want to have a life where you authentically completely yours. And I will encourage for you to think about that. Um, can you live a double life like this, splitting, present, presenting male at work, more feminine maybe at home? Uh, in my opinion, it doesn't tend to last because that splitting psychologically is can cause tears and disruptions. Splitting in this case, in such a way can be temporary band-aid, can be temporary coping, but I have yet to see this really last a very long time. And again, I, I have numerous videos uh, talking about this topic. What I encourage for you to think about is, I would encourage for you to really think about what is it in this point in your life, you really feel you deserve, desire, want, need in order to finish up your second half of your life as happy and joyful um, because you do deserve it all of you really really do deserve it i also picked up that even though you live in a small town conservative and you're afraid to come out at work sounds like you are quite have a lot of expertise under your belt as an icu nurse also let's be devil's advocates and entertain the worst case scenario let's say you have to pick up and move somewhere else i would imagine you would have I would probably say you wouldn't have much difficulty finding work because I see nurse, nurses are always in demand. And having been a nurse that has such tremendous amount of experience is actually goes uh, to your advantage. So something to ponder, I, like I said, I don't think this is sustainable long-term. I don't think it's meant to be sustainable long-term. I think if it is sustainable long-term, it's no longer sustainable. It is just masochistic behaviors that tears you apart internally. And living with this 40 is already masochistic because all of you are taking on and enduring so much pain in order to, in order to just sustain your daily lives. So think about that, but I encourage you to think about the fact that you have a YouTube channel and you started talking about yourself. So that's, there's a big part of you that is really dying to come out. She wants to come out. She wants to be seen. She wants to be heard. And I would, I would think about that. I think that's, that's actually a good thing. Hopefully that's helpful. I encourage others to chime in below to share input um, or supportive things that might be helpful to this individual. Great question. And I wish you all the best. Question number two. Hello, Dr. Z. First, I just want to say that I'm super thankful for your videos because they helped me a ton on my journey. You are so, so welcome. That's exactly what they're there for. I have two questions, but I need to give a little context first. I'm 21 years old, female to male, trans, and I'm about to start hormones soon. My partner of five years is extremely afraid of seeing me changing, me change on hormones. <clears throat> my first uh, sorry, I was rereading a little bit here. Okay. My first question is, how can my partner and I navigate situations where I'm ex excited, a situation where I'm excited about my changes and he is getting insecure, which makes me insecure as well. So let me first answer your question number one before I read question number two. Uh, so you're about to start hormones. Uh, you're about to start, I would presume, some amount of testosterone, whether it's microdosing or just taking testosterone, right? Because you're identifying as uh, female to male and you, you're you super excited, but your partner is hesitant. How do you navigate that? Um, one thing I would really recommend is couples therapy at this point to discuss and openly put up on a table what are your expectations, what are your values, what are the fears, and what are concerns. A couple of therapists, if you're able to see one, will help you navigate those things. It will help you set little baby steps. Having said that, relationships do change because you change as well. Not only potentially your partner may change in relation to you based on your transition, but you yourself may change in relation to your partner. This is something that people often forget when they go through gender transition. They're so wrapped up in fears 
that they're going to lose their partner because their partner is not going to want to be with them, that they forget that they're changing too, you're changing too, and that your uh, your things about yourself and your things about your yourself and your relation to your partner also might change. This is all natural and normal. Change happens in relationships. Either it is because somebody goes through transition or either it's because somebody goes through an illness, either it's because something happened, either it's because somebody shifts their careers. There's numerous, numerous uh, things that affect changes in relationships. It's all about how the two of you are going to navigate those changes and whether the two of you are going to maintain open in communicating to each other, constantly talking to each other, sharing concerns, fears, apprehensions, be able to sit with each other's feelings and allowing yourself time to adapt and see what it might be telling both of you about your relationship. Um, I think that it's too early to say what's going to happen. Your partner may be able to adapt. Your partner may be able to find out that they feel much more closer to you. Your partner might find, find out that they drifted too far to even sustain your relationships. All of this is going to need time. So little steps, give yourself time and communicating, 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 talking to each other is going to be very, very important for both of you. Question, your other question, I'll give them this question. My second question is, how can I help my partner to find out if our relationship still works for him? I'm asking because he tends to give up his needs for mine sometimes. So um, you can't. Your partner is going to have to figure this out for himself. The best you can do, in my opinion, is to tell your partner, look, we're going through big things. I'm going through big things. I'm going through big evolution in my life. And you are part of that evolution as well. There's going to be changes. We know that. Let's just be open. Let's be open-minded. Let's try our best. Let's be honest. I want you to tell me how you feel. I'm here to listen. There's none of the feelings are going to be judged or going to be scrutinized. You have a right to how you're going to feel. Don't worry about upsetting me. You're not going to hurt me. The most, the best thing we can do is be honest with each other. So that's really the best you can do. You can just communicate to them that, hey, I know that this is going to be challenging and different for you too. And I acknowledge that. Um, and I'm open to discussing whatever arises out of it. Um, yeah, that's what I would really recommend. And, you know, I've seen beautiful relationship blossom as a byproduct of tradition. I've seen beautiful relationship wilting and dying away as a byproduct. In the end, one thing I notice is that things always unfold as they should unfold. And there's an element of trust that is needed, trusting that things do play out for a reason. There is some, some things are not just plain coincidences or consequences of lives. So I wish you two all of the best and um, good luck. Wish you all the best. Question number three. Hello, thanks for your content. I'm, you're so welcome. I am female to male and 20 years old. We have a lot of youngsters today. That's great. I had the chance. I had the chance to transition at a young age and had been living stealth for the past few years. So also my closer friends do not know about my trans experience. Sometimes I'm thinking about coming out to my closer friends so, but I can share some of my experiences I had during transition or talk openly about things I'm confronted with at the moment. Example, upcoming surgeries like phalloplasty. I wish you all of the best. It's a big surgery to go through, but lots of people go through it and they do just fine. So I really wish you all the best for that surgery. But at the same time, I'm afraid that something changes. And even if nothing really changes, I'm afraid that I feel different afterwards. I feel like there are so many advantages and disadvantages of living south, and I cannot decide if I want to change something about my current situation and come out. I also feel like it is harder for me to come out after transition than on the beginning. I have no idea how I could actually tell someone I know for several years that I have trans experience. Do you have any advice for me? This is a fantastic question. And uh, for the record, numerous, numerous people, especially people who had a chance to transition early in life and 
have been living styles for a number of years struggle with the same question. Uh, how do they now, when they have formed relationships and friendships that have lasted for several years, what do they suddenly do? Do they suddenly come out? Um, there's no right and wrong answer here. There's no right or wrong way of doing things here. What I would encourage for you to first sit with and ask yourself is, how, what do you think of your gender history, right? Everybody who goes through transition has their own unique transgender history. But having transgender history is one thing. Feeling that, like that transgender history also defines you and now is an element of your gender identity is another thing. And then having said that, having that part of your history as part of you and knowing that it also defines you and then wanting to share that with people around you because you feel like it's important uh, for you uh, to share such personal aspect of your stuff with others is an altogether a different thing. The reason why I'm saying all of this is because everybody is going to feel and think different about their transgender history, right? So like, again, to use myself as an example, with something completely different as a cancer survivor, I have a history of being cancer survivor. Do I feel like having a history of cancer survivor defines uh, who I am? Not exactly. Um, I think it lends to my strengths and my perseverance, but I wouldn't say that it exactly shaped up uh, the person that I am today. I think it, it's a part of it. Do I feel like it's important for me to share this history with other people that are really close to me? No, I have close friends who still don't know I have cancer history because it's not significant to, um, to, to nutrients of our friendships. My husband knows I had cancer. Uh, um, cancer history um, and some really close people do so it's up for you to decide what part of your friendship nutrients will that make up how important is this for you if this is something that's really important to you for some people it is then I think it's going to be really worthwhile to be honest um, honest is not the right word because it's not like you're hiding anything it would be worthwhile for you to share in that case but if it's something that you feel maybe some kind of guilt, sometimes people who've been living stuff for a while have almost like this stealth guilt, <laughs> guilty if they start feeling as if they're lying. What is it telling you? Is there something then to work on? Why do you feel like you're lying when you are living a life identifying with your gender? So something to think about, there's no right or wrong answer. Um, but if you want, if you feel like it would enrich you, your relationship, your friendships, especially you're going through surgeries, you'll be able to share with your friends. I just had the surgery, I'm recovering. Um, then that's something for you to consider. Great, great question. I encourage others who are in the same situation to share what they have said, but this is deeply, deeply personal. And like I said, there is no right or wrong answers. There's just that which really is going to work for you. But I just want you to first to think about um, all the things I shared in terms of how significant they are to you. Great question. Question number four. Hello, Dr. Z. I yep. want to make sure we're on the right question. Question number four. Hello, Dr. Z. I just recently found your YouTube page and was able to find great comfort in your uplifting messages. I'm so glad to hear. I'm currently in the process of accepting myself as a person who is non-binary. It took me a while to get out of the denial phase, but here I am. My question concerns gender norms and internalized misogyny. As a non-binary person that is biologically female, I consistently struggle with feeling hatred towards myself, mostly due to societal norms. Unfortunately, I have developed a certain level of toxic masculinity in the same way that men do. I'm very insecure in my masculinity because I feel so imprisoned by gender norms that were forced onto me from childhood on. In addition to that, I experienced internalized misogyny as well as transphobia. Both has caused me a lot of discomfort and self-hatred. I do not know how to escape this internal attitude. I know gender norms are toxic nonetheless. It seems so difficult to let this type of thinking go as it is so deep-rooted in society and in me. 
Furthermore, the state seems to prohibit me from coming in touch with my feminine side. I think the problem is that I assign a lot of value to how people perceive me. This is actually what causes me the most dysphoria. When I become aware that people perceive me as a woman and not how I see myself on the inside. I have to admit, I have not come out to my broader surrounding, but it also feels like I will never be perceived as a person I am by everyone, as most people only see women or men. This has caused me to isolate myself from deeper human contact. I seek your advice on how to have healthy masculinity by letting go of gender norms, even so everyone around you follows them and also overcome internalized transphobia and misogyny. Thank you in advance. Well, thank you so much for sharing so vulnerably your experiences with um, you yourself experiencing misogyny as well as inner transphobia, as well as having issues with toxic masculinity. It's a total order how to overcome it. And I wouldn't say that all gender norms are necessarily toxic. Um, I think it's really how we, we contextualize them that can be toxic. I don't like the term toxic masculinity, to be honest with you. I feel like it's it's been thrown a lot, a lot. And I think as a result, a lot of male identified and masculine identified individuals are getting a bad rap. Because I don't think that every everybody who who is masculine is toxic. I prefer wounded masculinity. I heard somebody say, I, I can't exactly remember who it was a um, a coach that works on femininity, masculinity type of energies set uh, wounded masculinity and i think it's a very perfect and very on par because it is more wounded than toxic um you know i i think that it is possible to live in a world where it's still so far binary and yet to feel comfortable with your internal self i do think it's possible i think that in the case that you're discussing I picking up a sense that there is a deeper work needed in order to excavate your relationship to, first of all, what do you mean by toxic masculinity? Um, what do you associate with toxic masculinity? Everybody has their own different association. And sometimes people think what they associate is toxic masculinity is not toxic at all. So it would be important to discuss and excavate what do I assign to it and what uh, do you see as toxic and why? Where does it come from? Uh, does it come from your caregivers? Does it come from the community you grow up in? How those things have shaped up your perception and understanding of those things? And then excavate your understanding of misogyny. And further excavate your understanding what it is to be a man or what it is to be a woman, what it is to be a non-binary person. All of those things are going to be really important to examine. Um, I would definitely encourage for you, if you are able to, to step in the individual therapy with the therapist in your area to explore all of the things. Because unless you really work on your internal self and clear out things and learn to um, lay out things within yourself and then say, okay, now I see this over here is shaped by society. This is right here. I need to unlearn and I need to let go because this doesn't belong to me. This over here comes from me and this is shaped up by me. And this is also what I have to heal and what I have to integrate. And then also bring in healthy concepts of what masculinity is and femininity is. Remember, we all have balance of masculine and feminine elements. Uh, nobody is divorced from one another. And they have... An, absolutely less to do with uh, gender norms and they have more to do with particular energetic shifts and perceptions and way of 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 kind of uh, flowing energetically in a world so i would encourage you to then look at what is considered to be divine masculinity and divine femininity i'm not talking about guts and just really see where your understanding stands for and how you can start taking things um, in those spheres and start integrating them in. Uh, I think that this work is possible. I, like I said, I don't think that everybody in the world is toxic, uh, falls in toxic masculinity. Also, there's also toxic femininity. There's toxicity on all sorts of levels. And then there is um, 
a lot of energies and people possessing energies that not toxic at all and are beautiful and balanced and are healing and are stable and are nurturing um so yeah first step i would recommend for you individual therapy if you can to excavate to dig deeper what all those things mean and then start doing that work start looking at the healthy attributes of those things and see how you can incorporate them in it's a big mega question there's no one answer there's no one oh this is exactly how you fix uh, internal feelings of misogyny or this is exactly how you fix internal feelings of toxic masculinity it doesn't unfortunately work like that it has to work in relation to how you have at this point contextualized those things because everybody is going to contextualize them differently great question um and i wish you all the best Question number five. Hi, Dr. C. Thanks for your channel. I am a divorced 65-year-old assigned male at birth, likely asexual, despite a long marriage and relationship with women since then that ultimately didn't work. Three and a half years ago, at my father's funeral, oh, I'm so sorry to hear, I was hit with an epiphany that it was time for me to finally figure out why I have always felt different with two gender therapists. And more recently, Bristol, anytime someone called me Mr. or Sir. Okay. I've been over 17 months since I started hormones. And besides some minimal breast growth, I can honestly say that I have not felt that different with a notable exception of a complete drop of libido which I attribute to all the estrogen in my system, mostly for milligrams of estradiol. I often suffer from sleep deprivation and wonder the inability to even masturbate, which used to help me sleep. Here's my question. If I'm not feeling better otherwise, what's the point of continuing hormones? My endocrinologist recently said that with, within three months, because of the ample testosterone in my system, I should be able to resume previous sensations. And could I just have a resistance to hormones despite all the symptoms of believing I'm somewhere in between the gender spectrum? So I'm not sure what you endocrinologist said, which, which um, sensations should presume. It, it does integrate just means having been able to attain and maintain um, erections. If that's the case, that's not the case for everybody. Um, for some people, they're able to maintain sustained erections even at a normal estrogen levels and very low testosterone levels. And for some people, it tends to really decrease. And this is byproduct of estrogen, your sexuality, your, your relationship to your body and how you perceive your body and respond to it is going to change. Um, is it worth it to continue taking hormones if you're not seeing much of benefits? I would encourage for you to, to ask yourself what, what led you to hormones to begin with? What were you hoping to get in terms of benefits? For a lot of people, hormones are twofold one is to alleviate psychological distress of dysphoria and two to uh, start having physical changes uh, to attune their body with secondary sex characteristics of their authentic gender you've been a year and a half on hormones and you're saying that um, uh, you have not felt that different haven't really noticed any changes have you not noticed any changes psychologically? Is the dysphoria still there? Is the dysphoria still um, as high as it was before the hormones? So those things are going to be very telling you whether it's worth it for you to stay on hormones. Um, were you hoping that it's going to bring sudden physiological changes, physical, I mean, physical changes? If so, what were you hoping for? All of those things are going to be important to revisit and to understand. A lot of times, it's also important to revisit what your endocrinologist is doing. I'm assuming your endocrinologist knows what they're doing. The reality is that a lot of people's endocrinologists, in my experience at least, doesn't often know what they're doing. They're doing a very dogmatic approach um, where it's just not a regimen that works for each individual, where they're not really adequately looking at the blood results. Um, where they're not, for example, introducing progesterone to further increase the benefits, uh, both psychological and physical. So I would also look into your endocrinologist, see 
if what their understanding is and if they're really doing um best for you yeah it's it's not an easy question because i don't really know what exactly were your goals what were you hoping to i know you had an epiphany at your father's funeral but what were your goals is your epiphany that you're a woman if so um what are your goals are your goals to then fully transition whatever fully means for you if so then hormones are an important part of it if your goals are just to alleviate dysphoria, psychological aspect of dysphoria, and by hormones it hasn't been alleviated, then that's something to consider. It's really going to depend on what are your goals and what benefits you are hoping to get from it. There's no one correct answer. Um, and also for 65-year-old to be 17 months on hormones is also not that long. I know it may seem like a long time, but it's not that long. Um, a lot is going to depend on how good your doctor is with looking at those levels and adjusting until they find the regimen that works best for you. And a lot is also going to depend on what are your expectations, what are your desires, what are your goals, and how are they in alignment with the medical treatment that you're on. Um, hopefully this was helpful and I wish you all the best. Final question for today, question number six. Hello, Dr. Z. Thank you very much for your videos. To help me to realize many, many things about myself. I cannot thank you enough for that. You are so welcome. I'm 30 years old, a signed female at birth person living in Belarus. Recently, I started journaling to better understand my gender identity and to identify trends in my behavior. And I can say it's already been very helpful. Good for you. Journaling is phenomenal for going inwards and to process, especially for a lot of people who don't have access to therapy. I also write down my dreams. Bravo. Uh, as soon as I wake up in the morning. Some days ago, I had a dream where I was a guy. Most of my dreams are adventurous. Um, and that one was too. It was just a fact that I was a guy. I felt natural and wasn't surprised by that. I was able, I, I was after, I'm sorry, it's the, the font and you all know I'm going blind. I was after I woke up and realized it was pleasant surprise for me. This has happened before several times throughout my life. The question is, is it common? Is it a common thing for cis people to see themselves as different gender in their dreams? Or is it a sign of gender dysphoria, like a subconscious signaling me something? In general, how our subconscious mind can signal about our true authentic gender? Thank you again for all of you doing. Um, this is a fantastic question. I'm so excited that you asked because dream work is, comes from depth school, which is my background. Um, dreams are very significant. Uh, if for anybody who ever read work of Jung will understand that. Um, so if you are cis-identified, which is what you said, right? You said that you're assigned a female at birth and you are um, journaling about your gender identity and you asking me if it's for cis people. Okay. Um, and I don't know if you currently cis-identified or just questioning your gender identity, but for, let's say, for cis people, is it what does it mean when people dream? uh of themselves being other genders and their current gender in their dreams what does it mean it could mean lots and lots and lots of things i know you wanted a more clear cut answer um dreams are personal um our psyche um a lot of times in the dream state tends to go into compensatory function and tends to uh, compensate for certain things in our waking state and um, a lot of times dreams also can be revelatory in a sense of who we are. Is it common for cis people to dream of themselves being opposite gender? Yes. I had many dreams where I was, um, including where I was in an animal form and not only in a human form. Um, I think that is common. And the question then becomes, what does it tell you about your gender identity? Well, it could be completely unrelated to gender identity, actually, uh, quite frankly, because psyche will use uh, symbolism that is... Um, that is within our um, context in order to help us consciously and understand and free associate on that context. Uh, so sometimes I will dream 
for example, the dreams that I had when I was in a masculine role, it was maybe more, I had to do with stepping into more masculine, masculine energies in my life. To say that I dream, have a lot of dreams where I am taking on a masculine presentation. No, not frequently at all, but they do happen. For you, what you have to do, and you're already doing such a phenomenal job journaling, I would encourage, don't just make the big leap. I'm dreaming about myself and opposite genders. That means that that's gender dysphoria talking. That may not necessarily be the case at all. Start writing about what was happened in the stream. Um, what are your associations to think in your dream? What are your associations to male gender in your dream? What are your associations in real life to that? What are your associations to um, your style being perceived as male gender in reality? journal write see what comes up it could be that now as you kind of diving deeper into your gender this may come up maybe this is an aspect of masculinity that is showing up in your life but masculinity can show up in our lives in regards to our role to our expression how we present ourselves to the world um, and sometimes it can also come in relationship to our uh, gender um, gender identity and yes there's also lots of trans people that I worked with who also dreamt of themselves in their authentic gender. And for people who struggle with gender dysphoria, I find that those dreams tend to be more frequent because there's, again, compensatory function where the psyche unconsciously in the dream state tries to overcompensate for anxiety of dysphoria by soothing and regulating itself by presenting in its own authentic self in a dream state. Um, but those dreams for people who struggle with gender dysphoria will most likely be more frequent than rarer in cases. Um, but yeah, this is something to explore, to dig deeper. Um, how do you also feel about your gender assigned at birth? All of those things are going to be on the table for you. You're already journaling, so just start journaling deeper and deeper. The best way to work with our dreams is to, again, free associate. Free association is essentially looking at an item in our dream. Uh, let's say I see a line in my dream. Then as a journal, I will try to ask myself, what is my association to a line? So when I think about line, what comes to mind? Danger, predator, animal, um, uh, a big animal, strong, all of those things come up, right? So psyche is communicating in the symbolism, right? So what are the other elements of my dreams? What is the association to those elements in my dreams? Um, out of these associations to align, which one do I feel like more relevant to the dream context? Is the dream trying to tell me that something is in danger? Is the dream trying to tell me, is my unconsciousness trying to tell me that... Um, something is predatory is it trying to tell me that i need to connect to my strengths so you see it's very nuanced dream interpretation and uh, it's really important to look at your association and then see them in a the context of your dream uh, but it's a great question and again i wish i could give you a straight answer but there is no straight answer because this what is very individualistic gender identity is individualistic and your psyche and your psychic dreams are also going to be very individualistic to you uh, great question, and uh, I wish you all the best and continue journaling. I'm a journaler. It's a great way to learn and dive deeper into yourself. So that's all the questions for today. If you have a question for me, please email it at info, uh, info at drzphd.com. Comment below, share your thoughts, share your insights, uh, share any feedback and support for others, and I'll see you all next time. Bye.